we don't want to do is we don't want to pack this church out and the offering go down. Amen. Because that, that kind of mathematics don't make sense to me. Amen. Oh. So anyway, let's do this. Uh, let's talk about this. Philippians 4.19, but my God shall what? Supply all your needs according to his riches in glory in Christ, by Christ Jesus. He'll supply how many of your needs? All. How many? All. How much is all? all? All. All of your needs, but it's not according to what you're making. See? Oh, I need to stay right there. It's not according to you, what you're making. Some of y'all, when you wasn't right, you was making more money. But now that you're right, God is taking your money and doing a new thing with it. Because it's not according to your money. He says he'll supply all your needs according to his riches in glory. How much does he have? Let's see. He made everything. So that means he has everything. So if he's going to supply your needs according to his riches, then all you have to have is faith in this scripture. Amen. And a job. Look at somebody say faith, faith. and a job. Amen. Recession. It's a period of temporary economic decline during which trade and industrial activity are reduced. Trade is reduced, right? Because folk don't want to leave the house. Amen. You go to a restaurant, ain't nobody sitting at the tables, and you still have to wait. I'll be like, now wait a minute. It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's about a 15 minute wait. And I'll be looking. Nobody's in here. And they'd be like, yeah, including employees. <laughs> Boy, I was at Genghis Grill one time. I'm sitting in there eating, and, you know, they, they sit you down. So I'm waiting on the, the fork and the knife. Like, I said, I need some utensils. They came and brought me a package of a spork from KFC. And I know it was from KFC. It was from, I know. It didn't have no writing on it. It's before it gets to KFC. The generic. Just a, a spork. How am I going to dig into this bowl? You know, with Genghis, I put every, everything on the road get in my bowl. Big chunks of stuff. How am I going to get that out with a spork? So I told her, I was like, I need a regular fork. We don't have one. I said, what happened? Our dishwasher quit. I said, well, can I go back there and wash me a fork off? It's just me. It was me by myself. Let me go just wash it off. That's how bad it is. Amen. It's bad. They hire anybody to do anything now. Now, if you don't have a job, then you ain't been looking. Because everybody's hired. Amen. And companies with great reputations, their reputations ain't good no more because they just hire anybody. Yeah, that's how bad it is. It's just bad. It's bad out there. It's a recession. And they've scared people with COVID so people don't want to work. If they do work, they want to work online. They want to be an influencer or something. Make YouTube videos. And make them about anything. A story of this snail I saw. Walking in my backyard, we're going to follow this snail and see where he goes. And you filming him in <laughs> stop motion every day. You know, well, he moved another foot today. <laughs> Try to get views. Get a thousand subscribers, you can start getting paid. So, I have five, look at somebody and say five tips. I have five tips for you during this recession as members of Adamant Believers Council. 
and whoever else is watching this, but five tips that's going to help you, spiritual tips for the natural, amen? Because it's all together. So number one, tip number one, before large purchases increases to financial obligations or frivolous spending, we must run everything by who? God. God. No bucket list, no wish board, vision board, pictures you've been carrying around, folded up in your pocket of the car you want. You better ask God. Well, he don't talk to me. He will speak to you. Most of the time when you are freshly talking to him and they haven't developed an understanding of how you have to be spoken to, you need to listen to the preach word. God is speaking to you right now. Don't you go fold up in a corner and listening for voices. Because most of the time you're going to hear the devil and think that it was God. He told me to buy this. Brother, you don't have any money. He said it's coming. Oh, yeah. Beelzebub been talking to. Only the devil talk like that. It's coming. Only the devil. It's... Only the devil make you buy something and then wait for it to come. That's Satan. That's Satan. Amen. It's like buying a church and letting God fill it. No, that's why the banks don't like to lend the churches now. Because so many folks have done that. God showed me. Ooh, you sure. <laughs> Only God knows the future and the plans of the wicked that unfortunately govern our financial well-being. So because wicked people govern our financial well-being, only God knows the future. I tell people, I ain't scared of Bill Gates and all these folk with the, 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 the shot or whatever they got. I'm not afraid of any of that because God knows the future. So as long as I believe in the Alpha and the Omega, I know how this is going to end. Somebody ask, well, how is it going to end? The way God says. Amen. You know, when I was growing up in my house, I didn't worry about stuff in the house because my daddy was there. I would sleep so hard, you'd have to flip the mattress to get me out of bed. I was that relaxed because I know if anything go down, daddy's got it. Why am I up at night worried about who I wonder if this? my daddy's in there. And that's why a lot of people are so self-sufficient and can't trust God because you grew up without that, unfortunately. You didn't have that father that took care of everything. And sometimes you had a mother that was worried about everything. And so now you feel you got to put your hands in everything and you don't know how, what's that old song? To put your hands in the hand of the man that steals the water. You don't know how to do that. So you need to, in this ministry, we're teaching you that. How to trust God. Put your hands under your legs and sit on them. And let God operate in your life. Quit trying to do everything. Quit trying to do, I'm talking to somebody in here. Quit trying to do everything. That's a curse. From a dysfunctional upbringing. You're not powerful. God is. So learn to trust in God. Only he knows the future. Because God is Alpha and Omega. He knows what is right for us. And when. Amen. Don't you depend on your big toe itching. Oh it must be when. No. Wait on. Look at somebody and say wait on God. But pastor, I have a problem doing that. Well, then you need to come to church and learn how to do it. Amen. You need to listen to the messages and learn how to do it. You need to get around somebody that's doing it so they can help you do it. Yes, 
Amen. Amen. I know I'm preaching. Spend money on things that matter and try to save as much as possible. Thank you. I like that hand clap. Amen. Try to save as much as possible, but spend money on things that matter. Amen. You don't have to wear the polo every day. You can wear the polo on Sunday and the us polo on Monday. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. Ain't nobody looking that close anyway. Is that a, a racket? What is he holding? Is he holding a bat? <laughs> nobody cares. Especially here at ABC. Ain't nobody looking that close at your shirt. Amen. 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 You can go to H&M and get a whole outfit for what you paid for that shirt. Amen. Now, don't wash it too much. You gotta be gentle. <laughs> gotta be gentle with it if it came from H&M. Be real gentle. Amen. But it looked just as good. Avoid high interest purchases or borrowing at inflated rates. Ooh. Hey, I just spoke up. What? Because when everything settles as far as a recession, things go back to normal, you locked into that. Then you're going to be mad. Then they're going to get you again when you try to get out of that. Can I preach? Avoid high interest purchases or borrowing at inflated rates, if at all possible. Now, sometimes you got to do what you got to do. But if at all possible, when the recession is over, you do not want to be in a lot of debt or in a bad place with creditors because you couldn't wait it out. Okay? And all you got to do is ask God. Some stuff you got to move on just for circumstance and situation, but some stuff you don't. Assess those things Properly. I'm preaching. Y'all don't think this is a sermon. Y'all don't think this is a sermon. This is a whole bona fide sermon. Because this is going to help you. Proverbs 3 and 5. Trust in the Lord with how much of your heart? What about that part that has your dream in it? <laughs> dream. That dream. And I hate when song, gospel song, Christians, and when they adopt all that old dream talk. God just, he, he knows there's a dream in you and dream inside. What? You need to wake up. Quit sleeping and dreaming. Wake up. Now, dream from the Lord, you got to wake up and implement it. But if you just dreaming about houses and cars and furs, you in Texas. <laughs> you in Texas. That's the devil trying to keep you hot. Because hell is hot. You ain't had no dream about no furs in Texas. Oh, the Lord showed me just chinchilla just, just all the way down. You ain't going to ever get to wear that. Ever. And if you wear it, you got to look ridiculous. <laughs> sweat your perm out. You're going to sweat your... All your girls are going to be gone. Chinchilla. You don't even know what that is. What the animal look like? What is it? I mean, it's just... <laughs> <laughs> but that's your dream I've always what? <laughs> but the Bible <laughs> says trust in the Lord with how much of your heart <laughs> with all of your heart <laughs> and lean not unto what 
mine own, your own. You don't understand because you can only stand, you can only understand so much. You don't know the future. So that means you don't have a great understanding. Your understanding is marred by your foresight. You can't see far enough to truly understand. So you got to trust God with your understanding. Don't lean to your own understanding in how many of thy ways? All thy ways acknowledge him and he'll do what? All you got to do is acknowledge him in all your ways. Some folks can't let go of that dream. Amen. Some folks can't let go. Some women single because of a dream. You done dream what he's supposed to look like and act like. Ten dudes done walk by, but he don't look like the dream. Maybe he need you to turn into that dream. Uh-oh. I'm preaching. I, hey, it's just coming out. I can't stop it. It's just coming out. Amen. Same with me. It's like, man, maybe she need you. Hey, man, you got all them rules. She gone by the time you go down the list. Okay, she need to be. Okay, then I need to. Bye. Good gracious. Dreams, man. No, in all thy ways acknowledge him and he will direct your path. Oh, somebody don't want to acknowledge him in all their ways. You have your own ways mixed with it. When you have your ways mixed in there, he can't direct your path. God is not playing tug of war with you. Man, that's just on number one. Let me hear it through here. Number two. Number two. Consistency births. Mm -mm. This is where the devil comes, especially for men. And y'all let me say this. Black men. Black men. Consistency. Starting stuff and quitting. Saying I'm going to do stuff and quitting. Not keeping your word. Quitting. Y'all know that's the devil? Because God never behaved like that in the word. God's word is the same yesterday, today, and forevermore. He don't change, the Bible says. That means if you're an inconsistent dude, you're the opposite of Father God. You can't stick with it. And it happens in seasons. Every other year, you get the, I gotta quit. That's the devil. That's the devil. You can't raise kids in inconsistency. When kids see inconsistency, it gives them license to be inconsistent. But what the parents do in moderation, the kids will do excessively. So they're going to be worse at inconsistency because they don't see consistency. You keep changing your mind and always shifting. That's the devil. That's not God. He doesn't do that. I wouldn't serve him if he did that. Because he wouldn't be my savior. That's Buddha or somebody. Amen. You can look at Buddha's body until he's inconsistent. I ain't listening to you, Buddha. Always naked. You ain't never seen Buddha with clothes on. Brother, what is wrong with you? Not serving that. No, I'm serve God because he's always consistent. And he blesses consistency. He blesses those that he know are going to do what he said and not give up on it. Consistency births consistency. When you give consistently, then you reap consistently in your own finances. Uh-oh. Consi- Look at somebody say consistency. The church is getting such a bad reputation from the devil online by suggesting that there is something wrong with sowing, tithing, or giving to ministry. 
But whether you call it seeding, tithing, or giving, you are still blessed for what you give to God. Yes, Amen? All these old, oh, well, do we get a tithe? Do we get an offering? Give it! Just give it! I don't care what you call your money. Call it ducats. Brother, I'm going to give these ducats. Those will spin. Give the ducats! People get caught up in that. Now, tithing, that's a different thing. Tithing means tenth. And a tenth of an income. I teach this. I've been teaching this since we started this church. You're not required to give a tenth. But it sure helps us when you do. Or a tenth or whatever you're giving consistently. The tenth is a marker for the church because it shows what is going to come in so they can base their expenditures on that. Because we still have to spend money. So it would be good to have a consistent amount coming in. Right? You don't have to get spiritual. Oh, but the tenth and the Malachi, three, that, it ain't even that deep, bro. We need a system. And we need to know what's coming in so we can do the things we need to do. We talk about knocking out walls and all this stuff. We need some consistency. But you need consistency because consistency is going to bless you. No matter what I'm giving this God because this is my consistent plan. I'm sticking to it. You know what happens when you do that? God sticks to his plan. Oh, I can't see. That's okay. Some of y'all ain't ready for this. Amen. Our church starts at 1030 no matter what. Have you ever been in here and it didn't start at 1030? You haven't. No matter what, if I'm not here, it's starting at 1030. You know why? Because when we first started the church, I was consistent with time. Yeah. I'm always here when I'm supposed to be here. That consistency made some of y'all start being on time. Some of you. Amen. Now, when you got little kids and stuff, you know I hand out passes for that. Amen. Getting all that together. My wife got passes. We don't have no little kids no more, so I expect Sabatha to be on time. So I'm looking at a certain time. What? <laughs> consistency. Yes, sir. Because it births consistency. Go to some churches. Okay. When is service going to start? You have 7 o'clock on the program. It's 740. And there come the musician falling in from wherever he was. Dude, it's 750. Come on, everyone stand. Lord, bless this. No! He's not going to bless that raggedy service because you're dishonoring him with time. You're dishonoring him. Why would he come in there? Why would his presence fill that place when you raggedy with time? He's not important enough to you. You'll go get a check. You'll show up on time. But when it comes to the church, you float in here whenever. <laughs> That's a spirit. It's a spirit. Can I keep preaching in here? Somebody like, Please show Kendrick Lamar again. <laughs> Can we go back to that, please? Because on that, you was preaching. This ain't preaching. Whether you call it whatever, give it. Now, you can't mail a check to heaven. You know that, right? There's no address you can send that to. No, you don't mail it to heaven. We bless God financially by sowing into the ministry that feeds us. Hey. Elder, they'll never understand the labor that me and my wife have to do over you and your children when you trust them to this ministry. Amen. There's labor there. We're making sure your children turn out okay. And you don't want to give to that? You don't want to give your time? You don't want to... What? Somebody genuinely concerned for the well-being of your family. And you know we are. You can play like you don't know. 
but you know we are. Yes. Yes, Amen. Amen. So we bless the ministry. That's feeding us. The law of reaping and sowing is real. And ministers living from their ministry is real also. How else they going to get paid? Amen. Unfortunately, there are robbers and thieves that badger and fleece their flocks. That don't happen in here. We don't even talk about it. We come up and get offering. We, we more concerned about what the band is playing. We all trying to get a solo in, ain't we, Court? We all trying to. <laughs> we're not talking about the offering. That's our fun time. Yeah, but there are robbers and thieves that do that kind of stuff and get up, take three offerings with 30 members. Now, I'm pretty sure around the first offering, you got pretty. And then they get used to keeping some back. I've had them tell me that. Brother, I have to keep some back because he's going to ask for another offering. <laughs> oh, my head just starts spinning. That makes no. Well, you just take the three and make it one. And everybody, what you was going to give in two and three, just give. Y'all didn't hear us not one time. Y'all, we about to have a youth weekend. We bring it down. Palace. Pop done went and found the most expensive venue possible. And we gonna, <laughs> Eddie done went and rented the most expensive equipment ever made by the Chinese. Y'all didn't hear me get up and say none of that. <laughs> it did sound good. It sounded good. Y'all didn't hear me say none of that. So y'all, we need to take a special beloved offering for the youth. Come on, a, a beloved offering to help pay for the, we gonna pay, this gonna help give, so we can put a little piece of money in Palace pocket. You didn't hear none of that, did you? Friday night, we didn't take an offering. Saturday, at the venue, we didn't take no offering. We took one Sunday because we used ABC's air conditions. Amen. But we, we do events, you don't hear us doing that. We don't fleece you for that. Because I feel like without provision, you don't have no vision. That means whatever I got a vision for, I should have provision for. If the money's not there, guess what? We can't do it. Now, don't you want to be under that instead of somebody always in your pocket? Man, get your head out of my pocket. Dude, will you preach the gospel? Good gracious. You done took three offerings and all of them is $27. Will you get, there's no more money left in here. The devil always uses bad deeds to discredit the word. Yeah. But the word of God doesn't change for him or you. If you give, you will what? Receive. If you give consistently, you will what? Receive. Bottom line, 2 Corinthians 9, 7 through 8. And man, that's the first thing I tell people. My finances may seem like there's just an attack on my finances. Yes, yes, Is there consistency there? For God to bless. If you're ever changing, it's going to be ever changing. Your life's going to be ever changing. Can I preach in here? Hey Amen. This might make room. We might not have to knock nothing out. Ooh, we. That would be great. If you give you 2 Corinthians 9, 7 through 8. Every man according as he has purposed in his heart. So let him give. He never said every man, if he didn't purpose it in his heart, don't give. He's telling you, if you purpose it in your heart, let him give. Meaning, you got to give. So get the purpose in your heart right so you can give. Listen, not grudgingly or of necessity. Because they need it. No. For God loveth the what? A cheerful giver. And God is able to make all grace abound toward you. Why don't they ever read this scripture? Listen. He's able to make all grace abound toward you. That ye. 
always having how much? All, all sufficient sufficiency in how many things? All. all. May abound to every good. Look at this now. Having all sufficiency in all things. Can I keep going? I know we just on number three. Look at somebody say, God has never broken a promise. God has never broken a promise and I remind him of that. Especially when I'm getting ready to ask him for something. I don't care what you think. That's my, that's my source and supply. So when I come before the Lord, yes, Lord, you have never let me die. You've kept all of your promises. All of your promises are yea and amen. So while I got you on the line, Lord, with all of that consistency that you have had throughout my life, I need a little something, something over here. Amen. But I'm going to set it up by letting him know. And I'm telling the truth because he has never broken a promise. If you can just think back to the last recession or the last time you struggled financially, it got better, didn't it? Remember when you didn't have nothing and a bill was due. You know what that feels like to have nothing but a bill in your hand. No hope for anything coming to sit on, si on the side of that bill. Yeah. Anybody know what I'm talking about? You sit at the sit, and then you just keep staring at it like the amount on it is going to reduce if I stare hard enough. Then here's what you do. You put it up, and then the next morning you come back and get it. Maybe I didn't read it right. And nobody, okay, so y'all ain't like Maybe I didn't read it right. And the Holy Ghost will say, yes, you did. But you still go get it and check it out. And just look at it. Yeah. Been there. But it got better, didn't it? Amen. It got better. You may be struggling now. But look at somebody and say, it will get better. It will get better if you trust in God and remember what he has promised. David said he never saw the righteous forsaken, nor God see begging for bread. If you trust in God, he will always what? Make, what are we? What's up? I'm gonna have to get PJ on the organ because somebody in here need to go back. Deficits are always blessings in disguise because they cause us to seek God more fervently. Amen. When your gas tank was always full, you just rolling around. It's prayer time. Well, you know, I can't really make prayer because, you know, I got some other obligations that I've already said I was going to show up to, so I'm not going to be able to make it. Gas hand by half full. You kind of look, well, you know, but when it's on E, you <laughs> Jesus is mine, all mine. Everywhere I go, even the gas station, everywhere I be. Yeah. 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 You know, so sometimes we need a little deficit as a reminder. Amen. The bad times only last for a little while. God will always come through when? When it's time. Psalms 37, 25. I have been young and now am old. Yet have I not seen the righteous forsaken. Nor his seed begging bread. He is ever merciful and lendeth. Man, see God lends and there's no interest. God lives and don't expect it back. He is ever merciful and lendeth, and his seed is what? Look at somebody and say, you're blessed. Number four. Ooh, I hope y'all enjoying this. 
Good old recession message. Number four. Look at somebody and say, turn the news off. Oh, of the five tips of recession recovery. Most of the time, the recession will disappear if you turn the TV off. Won't, won't monkeypox disappear if you turn TV? If you, if you turn the news off, monkeypox magically disappear. COVID will disappear. Pandemic, everything disappears when you turn the news off. I'm not trusting anybody that gets paid for looking for stuff to say. You're looking for stuff to say? That means you're reading a teleprompter. You didn't have nothing to say before you walked in there and started reading. I can't trust you. Look at somebody and say, turn the news off. Hey Amen. Tell your mama to turn the news off. Hey Amen. And don't tell her I said that. Don't put me in. Has to see. The more negativity you hear, the more you are filled with negativity. Don't that just make sense? The more fear you hear, the more you are filled with fear. I saw a lady with a mask and a shield on. Walking outside, she looked like a stormtrooper <laughs> from Star Wars. Walking outside in a hundred and something degrees. Outside outside. She's been watching the news. She's scared of monkeypox. Amen. And they won't be honest about monkeypox. You know who get monkeypox. Folk that been monkeying around. <laughs> hey, I didn't make no monkey sounds. Came that close though, Kim. I didn't do it. You've been in there monkeying around. The more fear you hear, the more you'll fill with fear. Our minds are only filled with what we put into it. Isn't it that simple? I'm so depressed, Pastor. I mean, I'm just so depressed. Who has you been listening to? I mean, Sade is my favorite artist. You know, she don't be cussing and stuff like the new stuff. But she's always depressed. That's the most depressed woman on earth. Her daughter turned herself into a man. Cut her own breast off. She's been depressed ever since. You listening to it ready to drive off the overpass. Ah! Yeah, because your mind is filled with what you put in it. I need a husband. I mean, it's just, it's just, enough is enough. I got, I just, I need somebody. What you been listening to? I don't listen to none of that new stuff. Just Barry White and the OJs. Well, what they singing about? Being with somebody. Why are your music talking about being with somebody? And you, you can't figure out why you always want to be with somebody. Won't you get with the Lord and spend some time with the Lord? I mean, I get with the Lord, but you know, I mean, it just don't do the, it, it don't do what Barry White's singing about, does it? I think you need to turn Barry off. I just, I mean, I'm preaching in here. Amen. So if we fill it with God's promises and his word, then we will be strong in courage and faith. We will believe that no matter how bad it looks, God is going to come through for us. But if we fill our minds with the poison of the media, then our lives will look like the lives of those that don't know God. Man, when the church start looking like the world, the church is in trouble. We will begin to act like the world and live in fear like the world. You mean the church? Yes! Our churches will be afraid to assemble without protection from each other. They will begin to avoid one another and not believe that the assembling of ourselves together is God's will. Let me see. It's God's will that we come together, but we all might die if we do because God is not going to protect us even though he wants us to come together. Let you marinate on that. 
If it is indeed his will, why would we be afraid to catch something from one another? Now, if it's not his will, I'm not talking to you. It might not be his will for your church to gather. But if it's his will, if you can honestly tell me, yes, God wants our church together because he called us to this church and he built this church. Okay, so if it is his will, then why would you be afraid to catch something? It is God's gathering, right? Does he desire us to gather? Has an assembly of God's people in the Bible ever resulted in a mass outbreak or disaster? Is the Bible our example? When they came together, did they all get sick? Look at somebody and say, turn off the news. Turn off the news and fill your mind with God's truth. Romans 12 and 2. Be not conformed to this world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind. That ye may prove what is that good and acceptable and perfect what? Will. Will of God. Number five, and we're almost done, but this is blessing me. Yeah. Amen. Pray to, look at somebody and say, pray to write prayers. Man, now lay me down to sleep, ain't going to work in a recession. That's not going to work. Nah, you got to say something that the devil's not used to hearing you say. Catch him off guard. Focus prayers are powerful when the economy is bad and the elite are overly active in bringing about the new world order. You must pray against the agenda of the enemy. As long as we are here, God's ear is here. Somebody should have clapped on that. As long as we are here, God's ear is here. And he's going to incline his ear to hear what we are saying. He hears us and answers us. He can overthrow any human at any time. <laughs> Our prayers count for a lot. The devil wants us all divided and he wants people to feel hopeless. When we lose hope, we have lost our position of power. We must know that God hears our prayers and will answer them, even in the midst of a new world order. Amen. I don't care what Biden is doing. Biden don't care what Biden is doing. I don't know what he's going to do next. He don't know what he did first. So I ain't worried about that. The Antichrist, beast, false prophet, etc. are all subject to the power of Christ in us. Amen. Amen. Did you know that? I don't worry about no aliens coming down on no spaceship. They're going to get rebuked because that's a demon. I ain't worried about a demon manifesting. Brother, do you know how weak you are in comparison to who God is? I don't worry about that. Little green men coming in. And... Why are you scared of you? Get out of here. And look, 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 before I get into this evil list, make sure you're not scared of this stuff. That's demonophobia. You go home, turn out all the lights and walk around your room and cast everything out, speak against everything. You a man, you got children. You can't sleep with all the lights on in your house. Daddy, it's too bright. I can't sleep. Boy, leave that light, don't you touch that switch. You better go through that house. <laughs> Leave that door cracked. <laughs> go through your house speaking against that stuff. You done watched all them old horror movies. Now you're scared of stuff. So let me get to this list. Y'all. <laughs> yeah. 
But it's the truth. You can't be scared. Turn the, turn the lights off. Walk around and rebuke all of this. Get this list. Put it in your phone. Read these off in your house. Because ain't none of them in there. That's in your head. Amen. You quit watching horror movies. It's called demonophobia. And if you have it, you can't fight the devil. If you scared of stuff, you can't fight the devil. Amen. Aliens, Nephilim, ghosts, demons, ghouls, goblins, evil spirits, unclean spirits, night monsters, sleep devils, dark matter, old ones, witches, warlocks, phantoms. Evil doers and malicious men, vengeful enemies, and all those, including the Antichrist, that are against Christ must bow at his name. <laughs> including the Antichrist. He better not show himself while I'm here. Come to this church and watch what happened to you, son of Satan. If he is in us, then they must bow to his power in us. We must rebuke all things that come against his plan for us. As long as we are in the earth, Christ is represented in the earth. Philippians 2 and 10, that at the name of Jesus. That at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow of the things in heaven the things in earth and things where is that not everywhere hallelujah we serve a mighty God to walk around in fear let the news have you scared of what might happen like God is not going to take care of you especially when you got good credit from for it you got good credit with God. You've been faithful to him. You've been faithful to the ministry. You've been faithful to give. You've been faithful in all these areas. You have nothing to fear. Amen. Hey, y'all thought it was summer, did you? I got a prayer here that we gonna pray. And we're going to pray it together and trust God during this rough, rich, whatever time it is financially for the world, a recession, whatever, and China and Russia have just come together to create a currency together. Yeah. And so, you know, it's just crazy stuff happening. But guess what? Guess who's unworried? God's people are unworried. That, did you know the devil is more worried about us? He's more worried about this prayer we're about to pray. He's more worried about all the kids that got saved last weekend. All the kids that got set free. He was more concerned about that because when, listen, when folks are getting saved, giving their lives to the Lord and accepting Jesus Christ, do you know what the devil is doing? Nothing, because he can't do anything but sit back and take it. Sit back and watch it. He can do nothing. That's his defeated moment. So let us pray. Everybody stand to your feet. We just read this together. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Let's read it together. Father God, in Jesus' name, we recognize you as greater than, greater than all that you created, and even greater than all of creation that is against you. You are high and lifted up in our eyes, and we reverence your name. We place you high above us. Our woes, our worries, our fears, our anxieties, our human frailty, and our inconsistencies. Because of your promises in your word, we believe that everything will be all right. No matter what the world is saying, doing, 
or planning. Our faith is not in this world, nor in our own abilities. Our faith lies in you, God. We cast our cares on you and believe that you care for us. We speak blessings and denounce all curses. We speak power and denounce all fear. We pray with authority and cancel all passivity. We believe by the power of your Holy Ghost that our finances are secure, our families are secure, our health is secure, our employment and ability to earn a wage is secure, and most importantly, our faith in you is secure. We will continue to assemble in faith without fear of pestilence or contracting any ailments from our beloved brethren. And we will continue in the faith that you have called us to in this last hour. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Come on, give God praise in here. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Faith. We will continue in the faith that he's called us to. Amen.